What's going on, family? How y'all doing today out there? I'm really hoping that y'all doing great out there. I'm excited about this word. The reason why is because um, God was actually ministering to my spirit yesterday. Uh, my wife don't know this, but my wife was ministering to my oldest daughter. I think it was last night. And she was talking about change. And so while she was yet talking about change to my daughter, I didn't interject. It was a, you know, mother-daughter thing. So I let her speak to my my daughter. And so, but I was actually picking another word up in the spirit. And I want to share it with you all that challenges provoke change. Listen to me. Challenges provoke change. Challenges provoke change, and so what you have to realize with this is that you ha you need challenges. You need challenges in your life to go from dimension one to dimension two, level one to level two. Every level and every dimension is not the same, and the reason why is because these different levels that God brings us to, He don't want us to get comfortable. Because the moment we get out into our comfort zone, we no longer agree or like to adjust to change. And so the, the, the reason why change is so uh, beneficial and so necessary is because change uh, puts us in positions to adjust. You know, we have to adjust. Why? Because we're being stretched. Yeah, change. See, we look at change as a problem or a negative uh, thing that happens in our life, but change is a necessity that happens to get us to grow into different dimensions as human beings, as spiritual people, as Christians, as business, as entrepreneurs, as everything in our life requires change because if not then we're going to lie dormant and die our gifts are going to die our calling will die our mentality will no longer grow uh, our spirit man will no longer grow and so we can't complain about change yeah we can't complain about change we can't complain that if a if if a bill needs to be paid and we don't have the finances at that moment we can't look at the bill and say oh my god uh, I, I need money for this Figure it out. Go out and get it. Go out and create your wealth. Yeah, that's a change. That might be a change in your finances. Yeah, see, see, the Bible says, I think one thing that we forget as believers, the Bible says that when he created man, he created him in his image and in his likeness. What does that mean? You know what? I was thinking about this yesterday. I, think, I was thinking about the movie uh, Like Mike. Um, it's a very, very old movie with um, Bow Wow when he was younger. And the title was Like Mike. So the young boy, he wanted to be like Mike. Mike was the actual, the model for the movie. And so um, what it really, what it really represented is it, it really represented us as believers wanting to be like God. Us being created like God. What does that mean? That means that we have been created in the image and the likeness of God to do what God does in certain situations that God has permitted us to operate in. That means that if God was a creator, he put it the he put the ability on the inside of us to create. So so if I don't have the finances to listen to me very closely, I don't want you to get this twisted. If I don't have the finances to make something happen in the moment, go out and make it happen. Figure it out. God, I want you to start stirring. And this is where the creative ability of God comes in there and your prayer intertwine. God, I want you to teach me how to create wealth. Or I want you to teach me how to create an answer to this situation. I want you to, God, I want you to teach me how to create because there is a creator on the inside of you. Yeah, yeah, see, see what we do is we come to the point of challenges and we freeze. When God said, wait a minute, there ain't no light on the earth. He didn't say, oh man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta think. Oh my God, I'm gonna... no, he says, let there be light. He created light. When there was what, when there wasn't any water on the earth for human beings to have a drink of water to quench thirst and animals, God said that he spoke waters in, in the water and then he spoke it in the firmament and he separated the firmaments from the firmament. He started creating. He didn't just sit around, twiddle his thumbs <coughs> and sit around and, and wait for somebody to give it to him. He created it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Challenges should provoke change in your life. 
Now, you know what, my wife, I don't know, she pro she probably have uh, here lately recognized, but but I, here lately I've been faced with, we've been faced with a lot of challenges in our life. And you know what, I get excited about it. I'm like, you know what, this is just an opportunity. Yes, challenges are an opportunity to prove to yourself that you can do this. And, and to not only to prove to yourself that you can do it, but give glory to the name of Jesus that you can do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? That challenges provoke change and then it provokes glory to the name of your God. Yeah, because it proves that the creator is on the inside of you. So I want you to realize that, that all things work together for the good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. It never said that all things look together for the good. No, it said that all things work together, which means that sometimes it is going to be negative. It's going to be negative and it's going to look negative. But you got to understand that although it might look negative, it is not negative behind the scenes because you got a God that is sitting on the throne and he can turn this thing around for you and he will turn it around for you but you got to have some faith and you got to have enough faith to work because faith without works is dead so you got to understand and believe the scripture that he said it is going to work so i got to start work you better hear what i'm saying it is going to work so i got to start working it out yeah i got to start working it out see i believe that we have gotten lazy See, we think that God is going to come off of his throne. He already said he ain't going to do that in, in Romans chapter 10. He said a lot of y'all are asking for uh, God to be ascending and descend back down to the earth. He says, I am not doing that. He says, I've given you the power. Now, I'm not telling you that everything is in your power because it's not. Some things, it does require God to move and some things you have to pray about. And, but others, God has already left this word. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Yeah, all things in, in the word of God are given to, uh, uh, the, the word of God is given to man for inspiration. For equipment. To thoroughly equip the saints. Do you understand what I'm saying? God has thoroughly equipped you to do what needs to be done through his word. I need you to understand that, beloved. Is that everything, uh, God is not going to come down off of his throne. But he says, I have given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. In this life and in the afterlife. I've already, already given it to you. The only thing you need is the word and a prayer life. And everything else, God is going to build up your spirit, man. He's going to give you wisdom. He already given you the creative ability to make it happen. You just got to you just got to dig. Yeah, there's something on the inside of you. You got to understand and this is going to be for somebody. There's something on the inside of you that's causing you to doubt who you are. Do you understand that if you only knew who you were? <laughs> If you only knew who you were, my God, you would be at a greater place right now. I need you to understand who you really are in the kingdom of God, in the family of God. I need you to understand who you are in your family. Women, I'm talking to you too. This is not a masculinity thing. This is a, this is a humanity thing. This is a Christian thing. This is a thing that God has invested on the inside of us from birth. You got to understand who you are in your family. <coughs> you got to understand who you are in your house. You got to understand who you are in your kids' life. You got to understand what role you play in society. I'm sick of this feminist thing. I'm sick of this masculinity thing. Yeah, we, we, we are equal as God said. Because if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong. And we probably read uh, different Bibles, but the Bible says before he even created a body for man to live in, the Bible says that he created them in, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. He created them in his image and in his likeness. He created them male and female. That was before sin happened. That was before he raised them out of the dust of the ground. Now, I want to understand where are y'all getting all this other mess from? 
the same creative ability and the same likeness of God that I am as a man, my wife is as a woman. So what is the problem? We got to start understanding that the word of God is here to raise us up, to build us up, to edify us. I don't understand how y'all are getting so many different messages uh, and to create so many, so much dysfunction and disunity and then uh, say that we all serve the same God and read the same scripture. It makes no sense. So I want you all to understand that challenges provoke change and change provokes growth. And that's where your strength lies. Your strength lies in the challenge. Your strength lies in the change, woman and man of God. I said man of God. <laughs> man of God. <laughs> so, listen to me, beloved. I love you all so much. Remember, don't freeze. In the face of challenges Challenges are for your good Challenges God allows to happen Just like David It was a challenge Do you understand That it was a challenge for David To stand in the presence of Goliath Not only was he a Goliath Listen to me Not only was he, he a Goliath By stature and by character And by all the things that it, He was a champion By war so do you understand <coughs> what he really faced? So he was challenged not only in stature and stature and height. He was challenged in his uh, ability as well. Because in, in the face of the people, Goliath had a champion's ability. David, David had a shepherd's ability. They didn't. They didn't match. They didn't meet the. They didn't meet the um, the standard. So therefore, David, the shepherd, had to fight like Goliath, the champion. Do you understand? You might be facing your Goliath right now. You might be facing Am your Amorite. You might be facing your Hittite. You might be facing. Uh, uh, you might be surrounded by your enemy. But guess what? You coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out. I want you to prophesy that over yourself, over your family, over your children. That you, son and daughter of the living God, are coming out. God bless you.